uh, what these guys are, are fighting for is what I think a lot of people who are listening are fighting for, which is a, a chance at the American dream, a chance to uh, get a green card. And really, uh, when you think about it, you know, they're, they're fighting for the DREAM Act. And, and it's so silly. It's beyond silly. It's actually stupid. Here at the U.S. government, I know in my community, I know in my community, and uh, I live out in uh, Port Washington, Long Island, in my community, I think the cost to educate a child is, is approximately uh, fourteen or $15,000 a year, somewhere in that vicinity, to, um, to, educate, to educate a child. And now the U.S. government educates all these children, including uh, Felipe, who we're trying to reach now, and Juan Rodriguez and Carlos and, and Gabby uh, Pacheco. And we spend fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year in, in taxpayer money to educate these children. Yet, and now think about it. If, I mean, if these children started in kindergarten, multiply 15 times 15000 or 14000 whatever it may be, $10,000. let us say it's $10,000 times uh, 13 years in school. That's $130,000 that the U.S. taxpayers have paid to educate a child. And when that child reaches 17 or 18 years old, after we've put all this money into educating this child, we say, sorry, can't go to college. Sorry, can't get a green card. Sorry, can't get your driver's license. Sorry, can't go to work. Why don't you pack up and go home? Well, this is my home. I've been living here for 10, 12, 13 years. Sorry, this is not your home. You were not physically born here. Well, what's the difference? I came here when I was four. I came here when I was two. I came here when I was six. Every memory I have here is of America. I have no memory of back home. What's the difference? You don't have any memory of before you were age three or two or one or four. So, unfortunately, the U.S. government allowed these children to live here, allowed the, uh, gave these children an education, and then, and then they turned around and, um, and didn't, uh, didn't give them benefits after we have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars educating them. What a colossal waste of taxpayer money, of talent. Here's a kid, Felipe Matos, who's on the USA all-community academic team. It's funny because USA Today is, is generally anti-immigration, so they're like the, uh, you know, to the immigration activist, USA Today is, uh, is like the evil newspaper. So uh, it's funny that they would put an illegal alien uh, in the, uh, on, on their All USA community academic team. Um, I don't hear or see Felipe Matos uh, calling, unfortunately. I was looking forward to speaking to him, finding out where they were, what got them to actually do this walk. You know, why did they do this walk? Why didn't they just hand out flyers? Why didn't they just fly to Washington, D.C. and with a, with a banner? Why did they decide to do this walk? Who came up with the walk? I want how the walk has been going. I, I understand from, uh, I have never actually spoken to Felipe. I understand he only has one pair of shoes. He's going to do this because he doesn't have enough money and he's going to do this entire walk with uh, one pair of shoes. So uh, I'm also curious to see how his shoes are holding up, how his feet are holding up. If I had to walk 1,500 miles, I think uh, my feet would be uh, killing me. And I'm also curious to hear uh, what has been the reaction on the road. As he's walking down the street, obviously he's walking with a group of people with, with I guess, plaques or, or signs or something uh, protesting uh, immigration here in America. And I'm curious to hear what the reaction has been as he walks from American town to American town. Remember, he's walking through rural America. He is not walking through the streets of Manhattan where he comes across uh, immigrants from every uh, edge of the uh, planet. He's walking through rural America. And I'm curious to, to find out where, what the reaction has been from rural America. Has it been positive? Has it been encouraging? Or have they, or has the people as he's walked through the towns been uh, uh, nasty and, and, you know, throwing eggs at him for all we know? We don't know. Uh, we're going to try one last time, I think, right? If not, then we're going to have to... Uh, try to reschedule again for a third time. We tried to schedule this about uh, two weeks ago, and uh, we ran into the same problem with trying to reach him. Let's see. 
what we got. And the phone is ringing. And let's see if he can pick it up. And voicemail. All right. We can't all right. We can't wait for him any longer. We do have a show to do. Okay, we're going to we're going to clear the lines now. We're going to invite everybody to call in to ask their immigration questions. Uh, my name is Brad Bernstein from the law offices of Spar and Bernstein. Uh, the number here to call for your immigration questions is one triple eight thirty one radio. That's one triple eight three one seven two three four six.